South Park Snow Day is the third South Park game following the amazing Stick of Truth and the Fractured Butthole. And unfortunately, after getting the Platinum Trophy for Snow Day, I can say it's by far the worst game of the three. Just to quickly disclaim, there will be no story spoilers in this video. I'll mostly be showing gameplay from the first two chapters and a tutorial. I also won't be showing the final boss. Although, within about an hour of playing, you'll probably guess what's going to happen. With all that being said, there really isn't much here to spoil at all. The game's story is five chapters long, and it takes just under three hours to beat. About two hours more than the famous My Name Is Mayo game, where you hit a jar of mayonnaise 10,000 times making this borderline a grubby platinum trophy to get. South Park Snow Day takes place after the events of the first two games, with would you believe, a snowstorm hitting the town. Hence the title, Snow Day. There have been multiple casualties! Multiple casualties! They're gonna cancel school! I just know they will! As usual, all Cartman actually really cares about is will there be school or not. Please, make it keep snowing. Harder than it ever has. Please, God, just this one time, don't fuck me. Oh, and we've just received word that all Park County schools are closed for the day. Yes! Yes! With the announcement, he alerts the returning character of the new kid, and we're thrown into the character creator. This time, however, unlike the fractured butthole, there's no achievement for beating the game as a black character on the hardest difficulty. A staple of the series is the new kid's special farting abilities, and that makes a return here. And by very simply using our farting ability in the tutorial, we unlock the Green Seas Trophy for making four enemies vomit within one second. So how do the trophies in this game work? Well, there are five related to beating boss characters at the end of chapters, and some are related to defeating them in special ways, as well as a couple other story-related trophies. There are also some related to upgrading cards, and the cards are a key component in this game. Such as in the tutorial here, when I upgrade this legendary to an ultra legendary for a trophy. Lastly, there are some related to the combat, such as the first trophy we saw, and another one here for defeating 10 enemies with weapon strikes from the air. Unfortunately, however, I don't think the combat holds up anywhere near as well as the previous two games. By transitioning into the 3D space, Snow Day changes the combat to those seen mostly in action-adventure games, and in my opinion, it doesn't really pull it off very well. Maybe it has something to do with the added co-op aspect, but I played the game entirely with dodgy AI teammates. Anyway, completing the tutorial, we unlock the hub world, and it's pretty simple. There's an armory for changing weapons and abilities, a shop for cosmetics, and the ability to play online with friends. By talking to Cartman, you can start the next mission against familiar characters from South Park, and then you get thrown into this card picking screen where you choose your upgrades for the following mission. Each mission follows the same format, semi-randomized sections with enemies possessing random abilities that they pick in the first screen. Most of the game experience is moving point to point, defeating enemies with the odd objective of picking an object up. It's within the first mission proper that I realized there was a trophy for farting for the first time. If I press a simple button on the right of the D-pad, we get found the toot button for a lot of waffle, uh, basically having a fart. One thing I should praise the game for is there is enough enemy variety between each encounter, such as this tower of assassins known as an Ent. By using our daggers, we can cause bleeding damage to enemies. And for the trophy, tap that maple syrup, we need to kill the Ent with bleeding damage. The farting ability is used with L1, but if you press R1, you'll place down this totem, which heals you and other allies. And unless you're playing online without incompetent AI, then you'll always need to have this ready. After taking down another Ent and farting on the assassins that remain, we earn another trophy. So as you can see, a lot of the trophies are combat related and most of them will be obtained through natural gameplay. In the tutorial, as you saw, I unlocked the trophy for acquiring an ultra legendary upgrade. But because of that, I also missed the one for getting just a legendary upgrade. One thing to take note of if you are going through this game is every time you see an uncommon card, upgrade it to rare to make progress on the discerning trophy for upgrading 10 cards to at least rare. By very simply rescuing Randy and his stash of toilet paper, we eventually find ourselves at the end of the first chapter facing Kyle. And this fight can be a little frustrating with the vines constantly battering you around. But he does eventually go down. And whilst taking him down, I made sure to use the invisible ability for an extra trophy. And there it is, weed killer for defeating Kyle. Into chapter two, I made sure to kill enemies with cannonballs for the trophy, Pirate Ship Please. 
And then for Fields of Flame, I used my favourite ranged weapon of the three, the wand, to set four enemies on fire at once. It was very quickly I learned that the game would be just the same thing over and over again, with moments of story sprinkled in. And the story just isn't as engaging or central to the game as it was in the first two. It honestly feels like this game could have ended up as any generic game. It just so happens it has South Park voice acting and assets, which feels very unlike the first two games. Eventually Chapter 2 has us face Princess Kenny as we recruit everyone to work with us, and he goes down without any problems. Even in death, she is beautiful. Instead of spoiling all the bosses so there is at least some game here for people to enjoy, just know I earned a trophy for beating each of them, and in some cases with certain requirements, such as finishing the level within 25 minutes or only hitting the boss and not other enemies. There's also a trophy which pops after a bit of voiceover dialogue during chapter 3 and it's completely unmissable. So on to the other miscellaneous things. Within the fractured butthole there's a plotline of how everyone is affected by cat piss and that's an ability which we can use in this game. Essentially what it does is make enemies friendly. There are enemy types called necros which heal and revive other enemies. By using the cheese ability on them, we can get them to revive our allies for the middle management trophy. It's also here where I earned discerning for upgrading 10 cards. Speaking of upgrades, there's an upgrade called Cheesy Zombies, which allows us to revive enemy players as our allies. And by using this on a dead necro, we earn another convoluted trophy. This can be pretty annoying as it is pretty RNG based. In the final level with all of my allies down, I danced whilst reviving one of them for the grave dancing trophy and then we defeat the boss for the final story related trophy of the game. And that's it, three hours in and the story is complete and most of the trophies earned. So where do we go from here? Well with the story complete, Nicole will start appearing when we replay missions and she can give us certain ailments such as this one here by making enemies deal gross out damage. In the final mission, she appears only once. So by completing the mission a second time, we earn two trophies for having one extra rule applied and for accepting all of Nicole's packs within one run. There's also more luck-based trophies, such as using another upgrade called Event Horizon and shooting an arrow at an enemy affected by it. There's also a trophy for killing an enemy after using the Moon Jump ability, and this one is super easy. With all this done, I had only two trophies left. One of them was very simple. I just needed to toot on an enemy faction leader whilst dead. And I did that here whilst replaying the third chapter. The last trophy, however, it just cost me an extra couple hours from the game, and it left a sour taste in my mouth. I needed the RNG gods to bless me with opponents choosing the vampire's card at the beginning of the chapter, and then I would have to keep running through the same mindless combat until they would summon vampires. Sometimes they would spawn in free, but mostly it was just one. And this was just so tedious and boring for such a simple trophy of defeating 10 of them. But eventually, as all things do, the grind came to an end and we unlocked Van Helsing for defeating 10 vampire kids before the platinum trophy in South Park Snow Day. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment below if you're also going to be picking up this game. Be sure to subscribe for more and click on screen for another video by me.